Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're going to talk about moments of inertia of volumes. In the previous video, we talked about moments of inertia with respect to areas, and we define moments of inertia as the tendency of an object to resist a change in motion. There are formulas in place for a lot of regular objects, regular shaped objects such as rectangular solids and prisms and spheres and so on. But anytime you've got something that's irregularly shaped and you want to know what the moment of inertia is, you can use integration. In fact, you could use integration to come up with the formulas for all those regular shaped objects. So if we take the area bounded by top curve f of x, bottom curve g of x, from x equals a to x equals b, and if we were to rotate that area around the y-axis, it would form a solid. Notice I'm going to be working with vertical rectangles, and that's parallel to the axis of rotation, so that means I have to use the shell method. So if I want to know moment of inertia of that volume with respect to the y-axis, so I'll put with respect to the y-axis, so it's going to be the sum from A to B. I'm going to pull K, which is going to be the density of that object in mass per volume. I'm going to multiply by the volume that's formed by that rectangular solid when it rotates around, which is a shell. And the volume of a shell is 2 pi times the radius. So the radius will be this distance x. That's how far that shell will be from the axis of rotation. So that'll be the radius. Times the height. The height can be defined as f of x minus g of x times the thickness, which is dx, but I'll put that out here, because now I have to multiply by the distance to the y-axis squared, so x squared. So this gives me the mass, this is multiplied by the distance squared. Now I'm just going to clean this up a little bit, bring all my constants out front, so that will be 2 pi k times the integral from a to b, x times x squared would give me x cubed, times f of x minus g of x dx. So that's the formula we're going to use to find the moment of inertia of a solid with respect to the y-axis. Let's take a look at an example. Find the moment of inertia and the radius of gyration of the solid form by rotating the region bounded by y equals cubed root of x. y equals cubed root of x looks like this. x equals 8 centimeters, y equals 0, so this is the area we're dealing with bounded by those three things, and it's rotating around the y-axis. So I want to find the moment of inertia first of all, so I'm going to use a shell method. So this is my formula for finding moment of inertia. I just plug in my values. K is 2.7 grams per cubic centimeter. Integral from 0 to 8 of x cubed times f of x, which is x to the 1 third, minus g of x. g of x is 0 dx. So that's going to be 5.4 pi. This will be x to the 3 plus 1 third, so that's 9 thirds plus 1 third is 10 thirds, dx. Let's integrate it. The integral of x to the 10 over 3 will be 3 over 13, x to the 13 over 3. Now we're going to evaluate it. When I plug this into my calculator, I get a value of 32,071. My unit for my mass is grams, times the unit for the distance is centimeters, so it'll be square centimeters. So 
So that's the moment of inertia with respect to the y-axis. Let's find radius of gyration. And in order to do that, I need to find the mass. And in order to do that, I need to find the volume. Now there's two options for finding this volume. I could use the shell method and use vertical rectangles, or I could use horizontal rectangles and use the washer method. My advice is use the same method you use to find moment of inertia. We're already working with a vertical rectangle. We don't want to change and write everything in terms of Y now. So I'm going to use vertical rectangles rotating around a parallel axis. So I'm using a shell method for finding that volume. The formula for volume using the shell method is 2 pi times the integral from A to B of the radius, which is X, times the height, which is cubed root of X, minus 0 BX. Simplify it, so that will be x to the 4 thirds, and then integrate it. So that's going to be 7 x to the 7 thirds divided by 7 thirds, so 3 sevenths, x to the 7 thirds. And I get a volume of 344.68 cubic centimeters. Now I want to find mass. So mass will be equal to the density times the volume, so 2.7 grams per cubic centimeters, multiplied by 344.68 cubic centimeters. And we get a mass of 930.63 grams. Now that we have moment of inertia and mass, we can find radius of gyration. We know that the radius of gyration with respect to the y-axis is the square root of the moment of inertia with respect to the y-axis divided by the mass. So we plug those values in, the grams will cancel, and then we take 32,071 divided by 930.63 and take the square root. And the square root of square centimeters will be centimeters. Again, what that means is if, if we took a mass of 930.63 grams and put it on the line either x equals 5.57 or x equals negative 5.57, it would have the same rotational inertia as this volume would with respect to the y-axis. Let's take a look at finding the moment of inertia with respect to the x-axis. If we're asked to find the moment of inertia with respect to the x-axis, of a volume formed by taking the area bounded by f of y, g of y, from y equals c to y equals d, and rotating that about the x-axis. It's basically the same formula that we did with respect to the y-axis, except everything now is in terms of y. So the formula would look like this. Instead of a and b, I use c and d. Instead of x cubed, we'll have y cubed. And it'll be f of y minus g of y rather than f of x minus g of x dy. So there's the formula that we're going to use. This example is almost the same as the previous example. We have the region bounded by the same curves. y equals cubed root of x, x equals 8, y equals 0. But this time it's about the x-axis. Now we're, we're finding the moment of inertia with respect to the x-axis. We're going to use the shell method. So we're going to use horizontal rectangles, which means I need to write this as a function of y. So x will equal y cubed. I'm gonna use that function. And I need to know my y values. So instead of zero and eight, I'm gonna use zero and when x is eight, y is the cubed root of that, so y will be two. So I'm not using that value, I'm using zero and two and I'm using this function. So when I plug into my formula, my density now is 1.14 grams per cubic centimeters. I'm using my y values for my limits. We have y cubed, and then f of y will be eight minus g of y, which is y cubed. We're going to simplify this. So 
that's going to be 8y cubed minus y to the 6. Now we're going to integrate, so that will be 2y to the 4th power minus 1 7th y to the 7th. And we get 98.23 grams times square centimeters. Let's find volume so that we can find the mass and then we can find radius of gyration. Now, in order to find the volume, normally, and as I mentioned, I would use the same rectangles and I would use shell method to find the volume. But this question, if you look at it, it's, it's being bounded by the x-axis and it's rotating around the x-axis. So because it's a disc, I would make an exception and use the disc method in this case. If it was a choice between the shell and the washer, I would stick with the shell. The disc is much easier, so I'm, gonna, I'm going to use the disc method to find this volume. So that means I'm going to use a vertical rectangle because it's perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So it will be pi times the integral from zero to eight of the function of x, which is x to the one third, that's the radius, and that's squared, times dx. If you had used the shell method, it would be two pi, zero to two, then it would be the radius, which would be y, times f of y minus g of y, so eight minus y cubed dy. So you could do it using shell, but you can see what I mean. This is much easier. We simplify. And then we integrate. So that's going to be x to the 5 thirds. So it'll be 3 fifths x to the 5 thirds. And when we evaluate this, we get 60.32 cubic centimeters. So our mass will be equal to that volume times the density and that mass will be 68.76 grams. Now that we have mass and we have the moment of inertia, we can find the radius of gyration. Plugging into our formula grams will cancel, and we get a value of 1.2 centimeters. What that means is if we were to take a mass of 68.76 grams and place it on a line either y equals 1.2 centimeters or y equals negative 1.2 centimeters, it would have the same rotational inertia as this volume would with respect to the x-axis. Try to get some practice doing these on your own, and in the next video, I'm going to talk about some other applications of integration. Take care and see you then.